probably already know that the Flatiron Building recently went up for auction and was won at auction to Jacob Garlic for $190 million. Now, I've been looking all over the internet, I've been watching videos, and all I seem to be getting are histories of the Flatiron Building. And what's next for the Flatiron Building? So I did a bit of a deep dive, and I think I've figured out what might be the future for the Flatiron Building. Now, one option is for them to continue to rent it out as commercial space. Another option is for them to turn it into condos. And another option is for them to turn it into hotels. So I'll do a quick analysis of the three of those with the understanding that I am a New York City real estate agent, but I'm not a developer, I'm not a lawyer, and there are certain limits to uh, you know, my understanding of these sorts of things. But I'm happy to start a discussion and to dive deeper into this if you're interested. So let's run the numbers on Jacob Garlic's winning bid, which he backed out of, $190 million. Was this a good investment? Was he planning on keeping it a commercial property? Let's assume that he acquired the building for $190 million and put in another $60 million, fixing it up to modern office standards. So all in, $250 million. Then, since the square footage is $255 thousand square feet at $80 per square foot per year, the total annual rent would be $21,560,000 per year. So let's make some big assumptions. Let's assume that he pays cash. Let's assume that the maintenance is around 20% of rents. Now, quickly checking this, this would be equivalent to $1.33 per square foot per month, which lines up pretty well with my understanding of the residential market. I looked at the taxes on the government website and they are about $2.9 million per year. Okay, so garlic would net 80% of that 21 million. So, 17,248,000 minus taxes of 2.9 million or 14,348,000 per year. And how much did he invest? 250 million. So we take the net income of 14 million divided by the 240 and he would get a net return of 5.7% per year. Is that worth it? Would you plunk down $250 million to get 5.7%? I kind of see why he backed out. I think there's better opportunities. Not that that's the worst rate of return in the world, but that's assuming 100% of it's rented out right away. That's assuming no broker's fees, no legal costs, no any kind of soft costs, insurance, all kinds of other things. His actual rate of return would probably be closer to 4%. So at this point, wouldn't you just take your 250 million and put it in government bonds? So I can see why Jacob Garlic backed up. Let's run those same numbers at the $161 million price tag that it actually sold for. Okay, I won't take you through all the math. It ends up being 6.4%. A little bit better, but still nothing to write home about. So what about condos? Well, for condos, you can probably range in the three to $4,000 per square foot after you build them out. Now, at roughly 11,000 square feet per floor, you could look at a full floor of the Flatiron Building selling for between 30 and 40 million. Now, there are various upsides and downsides to the Flatiron Building. It has a strange floor plan, but it has a lot of windows. It has a lot of really nice windows. People said when they were in the publishing industry that basically no matter which office you had, you had a beautiful view. And because of its location, uh, right there on 23rd Street, Broadway, and 5th, you really have a lot of, of wide streets. You're not hemmed in by any side streets and you're not close to any nearby buildings, I guess is what I'll say. Uh, you're not in that situation which you're so often in in New York where you're in the back of the building and you're looking just right at your neighbor. So there's that. It's a super iconic building. I think that it's probably one of the top three most iconic buildings in the city and one of the most iconic buildings in the world. It's right on Madison Square Park. You have some of the best shopping right in that neighborhood. You have amazing bakeries and restaurants and you're right close to the subway. It's very walkable. That's just a fantastic location. And the building has beautiful details and history. And there could be a lot of value wrapped up in the prestige of living on the 17th floor, the 18th floor of the flatter. I mean, that is a pretty, that would be a pretty sexy address. Okay, 
Ready for the downsides? Downsides. A lot of this building is going to be eaten up by the extra elevators that you're going to have to put in, the emergency stairwells. This is going to be a complicated renovation. Currently in the building, there are not a lot of water lines. There is bathrooms on each floor that alternate, male, female, male, female. Uh, back in the day, when the building first opened in 1902, there weren't female restrooms at all. They were just all male restrooms. So uh, my point with this is an office building has far fewer amounts of uh, punctures in the slab. So if you have a floor, you really don't have a kitchen, a bathroom, a kitchen, a bathroom, you know, some of these big, this would be a five or six bedroom apartment and it probably would have six or seven bathrooms, a kitchen, a butler sink. There's gonna be a lot of plumbing work to do with this. There's gonna be a lot of electrical work. There's going to be so much work to do this, <laughs> um, but that's okay. Uh, if, uh, if this is being done, they're gonna get a lot of money for it. So they can probably afford to do the work, but it's going to be a very significant renovation, more than just putting in air conditioning and changing the stairwells and then you know, making it uh, ready for, for new commercial tenants. This is gonna be a huge job. Other downsides. Uh, there's a lot of posts in the building. So when you look at a floor plan, uh, it's not a very clean and open floor plan. It's not a very, it's a very weird floor plan. I would love for someone to design apartments, potential apartments in Flatiron. So could you get someone to pay 30, 35, 40 million for it? Let's assume you could. So at 22 floors, well, 21 floors minus the, uh, the retail, which we could sell as commercial condos. You have 21 floors, let's assume 30 million per floor. So we have 630 million is the full sellout. Now, we're already in 250 million, just getting the building up, basically up to code. So the big question is, how much is it gonna cost uh, to turn this into brand spanking new beautiful apartments? I think it could be done. If you imagine somewhere in the neighborhood of $1,000 per square foot to turn this into luxury condos, at 255,000 feet, that is $255 million. So, 250 million plus 250 million, you're at 500 million already. The full sellout of this thing is only 630, so it's not a huge range for profit. So although there's a lot of potential, it's not a slam dunk. Now one advantage of doing full floors is you don't lose as much square footage in hallways and uh, in elevators and stairwell landings, that sort of thing. You could have the elevators open directly into the apartment. You could have fewer elevators service the building because you have fewer residents. And in general, you're just gonna be losing less. When we move on to the hotel discussion, that is one of the biggest unknowns that I have, is how many rooms would you want to do per floor? My understanding would be to make smaller rooms, you would have a common hallway, you would need to have some amenity space, more lobby space, uh, you know, room for the housekeeping, that sort of thing. So I don't think you could just turn the whole thing uh, into hotels. But I, I imagine you could probably get something in the neighborhood of 100 rooms uh, in the hotel when you factor in suites, and you know, more basic rooms. You could average $1,000 a night, including your vacancy. So you're actually probably getting $1,500 a night, but you're only booking 20 out of the 30 days of the month. Then, let's say $1,000 a night, 100 rooms, 30 days in a month, you're pulling in about $3 million a month. So $3 million a month before expenses. Net that down to probably around $2 million a month and you're pretty close to what you were getting renting it out to Macmillan. A little bit better, but you're pretty close. So I'm curious where my numbers are wrong for the hotel calculation, because if the hotel calculation is better, maybe you can get 200 units in the building, uh, then maybe there's a lot more upside there. But otherwise, I would probably try to turn it into condos. Do full floor condos, you have 21 full floor condos and a commercial condo on the ground floor. What do you think? 
I hope this was different than the other videos you've been watching about the Flatiron Building. Until next time.